My name is Morgan Hughes. I'm from Sloan Kettering Cancer Center in New York, and I'm going to be telling you a little bit about the molecular pathways controlling cell polarity of the immunological synapse. These cells adopt an extended migratory configuration as they search for cognate antigen in lymph nodes and tissues. Antigen recognition on the surface of an antigen-presenting cell, or APC, induces the formation of a stereotype junction between the two cells, known as an immunological synapse. This is accompanied by a dramatic change in T-cell shape. Within minutes, the T-cell assumes a cup-shaped configuration facing the APC, which is characterized by polarization of both the active in a microtubule cytoskeletons. I will be focusing today on the movement of the microtubule organizing center, or MTOC, shown here in black, to a position just beneath the center of the synapse. This event sets up an axis of polarity within the T cell that enables it to release soluble factors directionally toward the APC, which is thought to maintain the specificity of secretory responses. Cytotoxic T cells, for example, destroy infected target cells by secreting a toxic mixture of perforins and granzymes, and directional secretion allows them to do this without harming bystander cells. MTOC reorientation to the synapse was first just documented over 30 years ago. It's been very difficult to study, however, because it happens so quickly and because T cells are so small. We studied this process using a photoactivation approach that gives us enhanced spatiotemporal control. MTOC reorientation is triggered by engagement of the T cell receptor, or TCR, by cognate peptide major histocompatibility complex, peptide MHC, on the surface of the APC. We have developed photoactivatable peptide MHC reagents that only activate the 5CC7 or OT1 TCRs after irradiation with UV light. This this enables us to switch on TCR signaling with a localized UV pulse. How do we use this reagent to study T cell polarity? We take T cells and attach them to glass cover slips containing photoactivatable peptide MHC. The T cells contain some sort of fluorescent signaling probe, typically a molecule linked to GFP or RFP. They do not become activated, however, because the peptide MHC is photocaged. During a video microscopy experiment, we use a source of focused UV light to irradiate a micron-sized region beneath an individual T cell. This creates a region of cognate peptide MHC that the T cell can recognize. In the ensuing minutes, we use either standard epifluorescence microscopy or total internal reflection fluorescence or turf microscopy to visualize the signals and polarize responses resulting from the stimulatory event. In this manner, we discovered that MTOC reorientation in T cells is guided by an intracellular gradient of diacyglycerol, or DAG, centered at the synapse. In this experiment here, we are watching both the MTOC, labeled with RFP tubulin, and DAG, visualized using a GFP biosensor that contains a C1 domains and protein kinase C theta, or PKC theta. The T cell is spread on one of these photoactivatable surfaces, and we are imaging it from below. Note that we are using turf microscopy in this experiment to monitor the DAG biosensor, so the green signal is really just the footprint the T cell makes on the glass. I'll run the movie, and the cell will be irradiated in this region. A circle will appear when that happens. You'll notice a photoactivation of the TCR in this region induces the localized accumulation of DAG in the plasma membrane, followed by the movement of the MTOC to that location. So play the movie now. This strongly suggested to us that the DAG accumulation guides MTOC movement and indeed perturbations that disrupt the ability of the T cell to maintain a polarized DAG gradient or to respond to one inhibit MTOC reorientation. We subsequently found that this DAG gradient functions at least in part by recruiting three distinct members of the novel PKC subfamily, PKC epsilon, PKC eta, and PKC theta, shown here are time-lapse montages of photoactivation experiments in which we are watching label forms of each novel PKC by turf microscopy together with the MTOC. As you can see, localized TCR stimulation induces the recruitment of PKC epsilon, PKC eta, and PKC theta prior to MTOC reorientation. Using siRNA knockdown, we went on to show that all three of these enzymes are involved in the polarization pathway, and that PKC epsilon and PKC eta function upstream of PKC theta in this context. Interestingly, PKC delta, the fourth novel PKC ice form, does not appear to participate in this response. How are the novel PKCs controlling the MTOC? Our study suggests that they function at least in part by coordinating the activity of two molecular motors, dynein and myosin-2. We have found that dynein, a microtubule-based motor, accumulates at the site of TCR activation, while myosin-2, an actin-based motor, is cleared away from the stimulatory region and instead forms clusters in the membrane behind the advancing MTOC. Suppression of both motors is required for robust inhibition of the reorientation response, indicating that they collaborate to drive this remodeling event. The last slide summarizes what we've learned about T-cell MTOC reorientation in the past few years. TCR activation induces the formation of a synaptic gradient of DAG. This induces the recruitment of novel PKCs, which then coordinate the distribution of dynein and myosin-2 to drive MTOC movement. It is our hope that a better understanding of pathways like this will enable us to design strategies to modulate T-cell behavior in increasingly subtle ways. Thanks for listening.